Okay, as we mentioned last week, my favorite episode of the original series. Up next. Hello out there, I'm the oldest nerd. And uh, as I said, my favorite episode, The Doomsday Machine. This was um, treated in a, well, a number of articles, probably entire books have been written about this episode. It is one of the most important episodes in the original series, and uh, probably one of the best received. And of course, um, I've done a video on it, and uh, I'll link it up here, so uh, you can check that out. It's an older video, so be kind to me if I'm a whole lot better in that one or a whole lot better in this one. Anyway, uh, what I want to talk about here is uh, a couple of things. First of all, the updated special effects. In the original, of course, they did what was possible to do during the 60s, and uh, in the recreation of the special effects when they were putting uh, the rest of it. Uh, the problem was, here's here's how it works. Uh, the um, original series was filmed, and it was filmed on 35 millimeter stock, which is to say that it can easily convert to high definition. However, the special effects were not done uh, in such detail, and uh, it shows up a lot more if you go to high def. They took some amount of time to recreate the special effects in a way that can now be done. And uh, while keeping with generally the same motif that they had before, they're able to do some things that weren't able to be done either for budgetary or technical reasons back in the day. So uh, in this, uh, there are a number of things that uh, I rather like. Uh, first of all, when you first see the Constellation in the original series, it was an AMT model. I had that AMT model. I could recognize it. I'd already built it at that time that this episode had come on. And uh, the um, one of the nacelles tended to droop. And uh, that was a problem with the model itself. And even the professional model makers uh, with the um, Star Trek production were not able to uh, make that stand up quite right. Uh, they made it, they, they put a torch to it and caused it to have some uh, melted parts and uh, probably did a little paint on it, but uh, not a whole lot. And of course they couldn't do anything to the model of the main ship uh, until the movies. So it was, um, that was the kind of thing that we were dealing with. However, uh, in this, uh, we see a digitally recreated constellation where you can see something that really looks like wreckage, uh, things that look like it's been uh, attacked and, uh, and highly um, uh, disabled in its functions. So uh, I liked this. I liked, generally speaking, uh, where everything was. The Planet Killer itself, uh, to me, looked like a big paper mache ice cream cone, which is essentially what it was. Uh, the original idea for what the Planet Killer was supposed to look like wasn't something they could film and certainly not something within their budget. So uh, they basically took the idea of a windsock and used that. However, in the reimagining of it in this, uh, they keep that idea but make it look more real. Also, we have more of an idea of where the ships are. They would show the ship out by itself and then the planet killer by itself. And it was hard to tell the scale of it all. And uh, in this case, uh, they, they do that a lot better. Also, you see the ship's maneuver. Uh, you can see whether they're looking at a forward view or a rear view, which was always a problem in TOS to know just uh, which way they were looking because sometimes they're running from something and it looks like they're coming, uh, they're headed right into it. So uh, in this case, the updated special effects work. Uh, we'll point out that Uhura was away from this episode, don't know why, replaced with Lieutenant Palmer. Uh, but we did have um, a good use of, uh, of Scotty, and uh, there were some engineers that actually wore blue suits, which uh, I thought was kind of interesting. Now, um, the highlight of all of this, of course, is William Wyndham, who plays Commodore Decker. Now, William Wyndham was a character actor. He died only uh, in, I think, like 2009 or something like that. And the he started as a film actor. He was in uh, To Kill a Mockingbird in a part there. Uh, he uh, was in other movies that you may have seen, like Uncle Buck or uh, uh, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. He had a, a small part. He was a character actor, and he was good at it. Uh, in the 
60s. I'm not certain if it was before or after this. Probably um, somewhere along the line, uh, he uh, played um, a character, the lead character in My World and Welcome to It, which was kind of a take on the life of James Thurber uh, based on his stories. And uh, the, the show was well done. It won a couple of awards. And uh, William Wyndham is one of these kind of people who was just a journeyman actor, but he could steal the scene just by being in it. And we could see that in several places in this episode. Uh, where he's uh, first uh, in shock on his own auxiliary control room. Uh, later, when he is taking command of the Enterprise from the bridge, you can tell that he's somebody that's used to be in being in charge. And then uh, in the shuttlecraft, as he's sacrificing himself, uh, you can see the terror in his face like nobody else could do. Uh, he really stole the show, and interestingly, uh, nobody remembers him for any of his other parts except for this one guest star role on Star Trek. He was amazed at that himself in uh, interviews near the end of his life. But uh, it, it goes to show, uh, in addition to that and the special music that they had, uh, they only did special music for this show and for City on the Edge of Forever. So uh, it was certainly uh, a well-done production. Uh, you can see um, uh, good acting, not only from William Wyndham, but everybody around him. No doubt uh, they wanted to uh, match to his level of expertise. So we see um, uh, better acting out of Leonard Nimoy than you normally do. Um, um, better acting out of DeForest Kelly. So uh, this was... Um, really quite a undertaking and and well executed it is a memorable it is memorable it holds up today and uh, does have a little moralizing of the hydrogen bomb that uh, the only time that's ever been put to good use is to get rid of another it was much more prescient in the 60s but it still applies somewhat today I'd like to know what you think about all of this. Uh, please put your comments below and don't forget to subscribe and like if you please. We'd have um, more retro reviews coming your way. And of course, we are waiting in June when uh, Star Trek Strange New Worlds comes back and uh, we will be uh, covering that and reviewing their episodes. So until we see you next time, don't go far.